No matter how seasoned a chef you are, there are always new ingredients and recipes to get fired up about. Do not f touch it. And here is maybe the most overlooked feature or factor in the success or failure of a steak, particularly a thick steak, but it's true of all meat. This magical period immediately following its removal from the heat, it should rest on the board, meaning sit there at room temperature for five to seven minutes, at which point stay away from it. Don't touch it. Don't poke it. Don't slice it to look inside. I'm going to find a good hot sizzling either grill or pan. Get a good crust and sear on the outside. You want to finish it either in the oven or all the way on the grill. Do not start slicing it into slices right away. What's going on inside is it is continuing to cook, but even more importantly, the, the juices are distributing themselves in a truly wonderful alignment. That's why if you cut into a steak too quickly off the barbecue, you get this sort of bullseye pattern instead of what it should be, a gentle graduation from red to various hues of pink to the outer crust. All the difference in the world between a good steak and a, and a totally messed up steak is going on in that period of time that you're just doing nothing. Nothing. And then just let it sit. Don't wrap it in foil. Don't cover it. Don't poke it. Don't prod it. Don't even look at it. Just let it sit there. Leave it alone. Again, mature steaks. And as always, I'll make my paste and my seasoning. So with the beef, we'll use the, the beef cube, a tiny bit of olive oil in that to make that paste. It's approximately half a cube of steak. Right, the guide to cooking a perfect steak, hot pan. The secret here is to make sure that we literally sear the steak and not boil it. Season it first, beautifully done. Get some nice large grains of pepper, so you've got a nice bit of heat. Mop up all that seasoning and sort of push in. The four most important parts to make sure you take them out of the fridge 20 minutes before you actually start cooking them. Cooking a steak, that's... So just mix that in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to seal the steaks so they're pink, medium rare. I was taught years ago to season steaks with salt and pepper. And one day, my fascination for stock cubes, I thought, let's make a paste. And that's what I did. Stone cold in the centre, you're going to have to overcook it on the outside. Pan's just started smoking. Touch of oil in, roll that round, and then just lay the steaks away, always away from me, and let the pan do the work. I made a paste. I tried it. I seasoned one steak with salt and pepper, and one, season, and one steak with the seasoning paste and the seasoning paste works better every time. That's the kind of noise you want to hear in the pan every time. That nice sear. Again, pair of tongs. So we, we need a very hot pan to create that caramelization. So what we're going to do is seal the steaks, caramelize them, seal them on the plate. Turn it over very carefully. Literally 30 seconds of the pan, you can see the color. Beautiful. That layer of fat on the back of the sirloin, you want to render that down as well. That's it there. So hit that into the pan. Use the pan to your advantage. Tilt the pan, let all that hot fat, olive oil run down the back, and it starts to sear the steak even better. Back in with the steaks, and there we are. This is more a traditional. You put a little bit of garlic in, that nice little flavour of the steaks. It doesn't need to be peeled, you just lightly crush and then. That gives a really nice flavour to the steak, turning every minute so you've got that nice even colour. Go home, Saturday night, me and the wife, peppered steak. And if you're turning your steaks every minute, it starts to cook evenly. A little bit of thyme, it's really nice to get that nice fragrant smell of thyme. A touch more. I quite like my steaks rare, so rare is here, opposite the palm, at the top. Medium is there, and well done is at the top of your wrist. Deglass with some Worcester sauce, bit of cream, and it's delicious. But 
little knobs of butter. And this is where the steak starts to take on a completely different flavour. Tilt the pan, and then just baste the steaks. For that fried thyme, for that garlic. Nothing's burning, and that's why we started off with olive oil. And so we'll take these out. So there's our steaks. Get the garlic and sort of brush the garlic over. Off with the gas. Generous amount of Worcester sauce, and then just to add some cream, some green peppercorns, optional. Put the steaks back in. Take them out, beautiful. Let them rest, and off. And then from there, slice rare, going on to medium rare. Mmm, delicious. And there's steak au poire.